until we get above the 200 day moving average and start building above the 200 day moving average, you can only speculate when that bottom is going to come. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrade.com Weekend Update Show. Hope everybody uh, is doing well. Hope everybody is uh, you know, safe. Uh, first and foremost, before we uh, even get started, uh, and talk about the markets. You know, very, very aggressive uh, week last week. One of the better actions I, I can remember in a very long time. Long, short, especially short and then long. But uh, number one, I want to send, and I think all of us, uh, all of us can speak to this. I, I, I want to send our, our our prayers and best thoughts to uh, all the citizens uh, of the Ukraine. Right? Um, you know, it's, it's just it's just tragic what's going on here. Um, you know, without debating uh, the whole merit of good versus evil or bad versus good, or somehow there's still innocent lives uh, involved. And uh, unfortunately, somebody sitting there right now, you know, minding their own business and hoping to God they stay safe and their lives is in, lives are in jeopardy. So before uh, you talk about how good or bad your uh, week was of trading, look at the big picture. People are losing their lives and there's, there's absolutely no coming back uh, from that. So, um, you know, at this time, send your prayers, right? Send your good energy, send your good vibes uh, to all the people uh, in the Ukraine and hopefully uh, this craziness, right? And that's exactly what it is. Um, kind of goes away sooner than later, right? Because again, at the end of the day, it's all about life and death. And if we have only have one life to live, uh, nobody, uh, nobody should be ever in danger uh, just kind of waking up in the morning. So hopes and prayers to everybody uh, in the Ukraine. So Let's talk about the tape. You know, if you've been watching this video, um, you know we've been, you know we've been sell bias this market for two, you know, two months. Um, you know, two months since the 200-day moving average has gone down. Um, and if you if you guys remember, all these all these events, all the speculation of Putin invading uh, the Ukraine was just speculation. And a lot of people, including myself, I'll be honest with you, um, and I've said it a number of times, I, I actually didn't believe it was going to happen just because there was so much. Uh, grandstanding, and I think that's what it was. You know, this guy was basically making statements. So I was, yeah, I'll make an announcement if I feel like it. You know, on Thursday, if we want to, it, it just felt like a lot of uh, measuring egos. Like this dude was like bored out of COVID, but it actually played out. And the one thing that that we 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 didn't expect was the reaction of what happened later, right? So we saw that big reaction. Obviously, the market was selling off. A month before this even came into play, but once the headlines started kicking in, that's when the nervousness came in. And I, I said it for for weeks and weeks and weeks. I felt like it was very orderly. Most of the down days, even if he had down days five, six, seven hundred points, um, was it was was very organic. That's the best way of saying it. And slowly but surely, we got to you know we got to about Wednesday, right? And we had that big gap down, and we had that big macro uh, breakdown in uh, the queues, and you saw that big move on Tesla and the video and everything else. And I finally started to turn around. I go, well, you know, maybe you could finally start calling this a little bit of a panic. You know, I don't want to call it a crash, but you know, that started to echo. And then finally, you had that news break over the night, overnight, that Russia actually attacked. Right? They started bombing. They started with the missiles and all that stuff, and the. The Dow went down 800 points very, very quickly. And uh, the NASDAQ was down 300, 400 points very, very quickly. And for all of us who, who were short overnight, you know, had the NVIDIA and had the Tesla and blah, 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 blah. Uh, big moves down, right? It had nothing to do with the big moves down. And then I tweeted something that I think a lot of people gave me too much credit for. Um, I tweeted something out. If you go on my uh, Twitter page. I tweeted something out and I said, if, and I'm paraphrasing, I just don't remember the tweet. And I said, if, if the perma bulls, right, had any any hope of a, a, a kind of a market reversal today, just to kind of throw the baby out with the bathwater scenario that any capitulation, I don't want to use the word bottom, but any capitulation move needs, it's kind of an event like this. It's almost like instead of sell the news, it's almost like buy the news. 
And that's the day the NASDAQ went from down 400 to being up 500 or 450 points. And a lot of people said, great call. It wasn't a great call. You think I knew, right? If I knew, I would have loaded up on the bottom. It was, you know, it was something that I, you know, 1% shot. I thought it could happen. It was a pure shot in the dark. It's like it's like the the same percentages of throwing a hail mary. You're, you know, maybe for the one percent that it's going to hit. So I, I didn't really believe ninety nine percent of what I thought was actually go green. Sometimes you get lucky, and, and that day we had a really really aggressive reversal. And it was one of those days on Thursday going into Friday session that the the literally the strategy was in. Uh, we were, you know, we were laughing about it in, in the webinar. I literally said, "Forget about supply. Just buy anything that goes green. Literally anything that goes green." And that was the one percent time in your career uh, that, when we reversed, that you could have literally bought stocks going red to green, completely brainless, completely even, even not even thinking about it. And that's when we had this really, really big reversal on Thursday session. Obviously, uh, it spilled into Friday. But believe me, you give it. You know, for all you guys who are talking about great call, it was a pure shot in the dark, man. There was nothing behind it. Believe me, I'm an idiot like any, like everybody else. Uh, I'm just the one that just admits it. And people kind of try to still believe that they're smart, that they know uh, that actually is going to happen. But hey, it is what it is, right? It looks good on paper. And the question was, well, now what happens, right? And you know, you know how come the market reversed, right? And the one thing that I've always... Uh, maintained. And if you go back to history, you, you kind of, you, you see the documentation of the world, the market and the financial world learns to live with, um, I don't want to use the word disasters, but they, they, they learn to eventually live with bad news. Let's call it that, right? If you go back to, you know, 2008, in the middle of the mortgage crisis, uh, entering 2009, slowly but surely, although the market was terrible, right? People you know, losing their jobs, losing their homes, companies going out of business. Although the market was terrible, you started slowly but surely towards the end of towards the end of eight, the start of nine. Slowly but surely, the volatility started shrinking, little by little, right? Little by little, and eventually we had uh, the 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 generational bottom in 2009 that we rallied for the next, you know. Where are we? 12, you know, the next uh, what? Twelve years? Thirteen years? So, people started living, and the market, financial markets, started living with reality. Okay, and eventually we started rallying, even though you know, middle of two thousand nine, people still lost their homes, people still lost their jobs, people still didn't uh, recover from the financial crisis, and institutionals did exactly the same thing. But the market started learning to live with bad news, right? If you look at the March 20 lows, right, of of, uh, of the pandemic, right? This was a global pandemic, right? Businesses were shut down. People were getting sick. People were dying. We didn't know what was going on. We didn't know what our future was going to hold. But eventually, a month later, the market started to deal with bad news. And the reason why the market, or at least one of the reasons why the market uh, started bouncing on the, the physical go-ahead green light invasion of Russia into the Ukraine is the financial market started realizing, well, now this is a part of our lives, right? It's not going away. Just the way uh, the pandemic wasn't going away in April 2020, the markets realized come Thursday, well, this is now a part of our lives. So now we're gonna have to live with this in this fluid motion headline society for the next X amount of weeks, X amount of months, and who knows, maybe X amount of years. We don't know how far this is gonna stretch. So slowly but surely, the market started dealing with it and accepted it. And that's kind of one of the, you know, one of the deals that the markets, to a lot of people, when you're bent over on the wrong side of the tape, people start talking about, well, it doesn't make sense. How can the market start going down now, start going up now, now that there's physical casualties, there's, there's an invasion. Yeah, this is the reality. This is what the market does. It, it it's almost buys the bad headline when there's confirmation that this is part of our lives and it's going to be part of our lives, at least in the short term, uh, going forward. The question is, well, what happens next? Now, guys, let's let's take a let's take a, a, a trip back, right? When you go back, and again, remember, we're underneath the 200-day moving average. Nothing bullish for the long term happens underneath the 200-day moving average. We always maintain the stance, and you kind of see it on the day-to-day -day trading that yes, you will definitely have moves to the upside, maybe multiple days to the upside, but the overall theme is still to the downside because again, we are below the 200-day moving average and that's the constant reminder that it's not risk on, 
it's risk, but control your risk, especially on the intraday ranks. And if you look at the bottom, right, that people deem the bottom on January the 24th, which later this week uh, got broken for that really, really aggressive move down, which was awesome, which is really, really awesome if you were positioned that way. But the point was a lot of people turned around on January 24th and said, that's it. That's the capitulation bottom, right? And we actually did have a three, four day run back into the 200 day moving average and it got stuffed rejected right then we had another little run back into the 200 day moving average and then we got rejected so people are turning around you could see it right you could totally see it just because if you go on social media you'll get a little bit of a pulse of what, what the retail public is is saying and they say well thursday was the bottom that was the bottom that was the, how could it not be the bottom that was the bottom we'll ask the people on january the 24th if that was the bottom right I, again until we get above the 200 day moving average and start building above the 200 day moving average, you can only speculate when that bottom is gonna be put in. That bottom could have easily been put in on Thursday, but maybe that bottom will be eventually put in a Thursday of 2023. We don't know. Until we get above this whole supply zone, stop, stop chopping down the trees uh, on all these supply zones, you can only guess when that bottom is gonna come. Eventually, because the market has shown us over the last 100, 150 years, eventually the market will go high, right? That's kind of the mantra of the market. No matter how the bad news is, eventually it's gonna shake off the bad news, whether it's war, pandemic, or financial crisis, eventually we'll be at the high of the day, but it won't be that high of the day tomorrow. And that's the most important part is where we're trying to prepare for tomorrow. If you are an investor, where you're looking to put on longer term risk. Again, the, the, you know, the theory is, well, I could buy stocks anywhere. Eventually they'll go higher. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. And it all depends on what stock you wanna trade. But why speculate underneath the 200 day moving average? If you believe again, and I'm just using an example. If you believe, for example, that Amazon will be back at say $4,000 a share. Well, why not? If, if you think it's gonna get the 4,000, right? Why not buy the stock above the 200 day moving average and give yourself a fighting chance without losing sleep every single night that it's been going up and down 300, 400 points. Again, I love Amazon. Again, I do believe the stock will be at four or $5,000 one day, but again, it's not gonna be there tomorrow. And that's the most important part. And if you are fighting volatility and you want to kind of avoid sleepless nights. And again, I'm using just Amazon as an example. Every stock, no matter what stock it is, for, for it to finally break out of a downward bias and start accumulating higher prices, everything, everything needs to be above the 200-day moving average. The question is, and then the question always remains, and people ask me all the time, well, what, what's the difference where I buy now? 10 years from now, it's gonna go higher. You might think so, you might believe so, but anything could happen next week. Anything could happen three weeks from now. You can't rely on what happens in 10 years if we can't control what happens in 10, in 10 minutes. And that's the most important part. And for any stock technically to go higher, it needs to reclaim the 200-day moving average. And any market that needs to go higher, or wants to go higher, has to do the same. And where we are right now is kind of where we were uh, going back to uh, January 31st, where we reclaimed the 10-day moving average there, and we did reclaim the 10-day moving average on Friday. And the question is, how high can we go? Can we get one more day of upward bias? Sure. You know, I wouldn't be shocked if we get back up to uh, this area here, maybe another seven points on the queues, maybe give a maybe two, three more days of buying. But the question is, what happens when they get back to uh, the intermediate supply of the 20 day, 20 day supply? And you can see here, every single time it gets to 20 day supply, it gets rejected as well. So I, I think in this type of market, you want it like going into Monday, you kind of want to prepare for the upside. Like I have some you know names I, I'm definitely watching to the upside. But look, it, as long as we stay underneath the 200 day moving average, we've been pretty constant with this uh, opinion for the last couple of months until we we, we we gain control everything is basically cash flow right to the trading to the upside to the downside there's macro levels once they confirm they get destroyed you know uh, everything that got destroyed this weekend that they broke macro nvidia destroyed amazon destroyed amazon went down 350 points which is which is an amazing move big shout out to my man uh, andrew quirk individually who held that shit for 300 points phenomenal phenomenal move but not very many, many people could do that but he did, congratulations there. Tesla got absolutely manhandled this week uh, and a lot of names did exactly the same thing, but now we are above uh, the 10 day moving average. Our job right now is to identify the stocks who do have a little bit of room. Because again, if you go through charts this weekend, you just see a lot of, a lot of wounded warriors, man, trying to 
you know, trying to get there, you know, trying to just stand up just to get a little bit more upside before the next supply zone. And our job is to find those names who potentially have some more room uh, back to the upside. So if you look, for example, a name uh, like AMD, yeah, listen, if we have one more day of rallying, could AMD uh, take out this channel here and give you a nice move? Sure, not bad. You had Square who gave you a pretty good pop on earnings on, on Monday. Is, you know, is there room to $26, $27 if the market gives you one more day? Yeah, sure. I think the value in a name like Square, you want to buy it into a dip, into rising 60-minute support. And if it goes red to green and takes out the previous channel's high, maybe you get a move uh, to 26 27 Those are the type of names you kind of uh, definitely want to watch. Uh, even a name like Amazon, you know, who I, I think maybe has one more day up, and you can see the 60-minute band was starting to get slowly but surely into supply. If you look at the 10-day moving average, you know, maybe this thing does have another 30, 35 points. Usually, you know, you go into a trade on Amazon and say, yo, I'm not selling it for more than 50 100 points. Yeah, we're not in that market, right? We're not in that market. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 points. That's a good move, especially look at the low, look at the move from Friday's low. I mean, yeah, that, that's a good move. So that's our challenge going into, you know, that's our challenge going into uh, Monday's session. There's a lot of names more than not uh, that are headed into supply or at supply right now that I have no interest in looking at because I know deep in my mind the market could turn on a dime whether we have one or two more days of upside bias I do you know I do know for the big picture we still need to get above the 200 day moving average so I am you know I am a little I don't use the word bullish I, I am 5149 let's use that I, I'm 5149 maybe 5248 buy bias going into Monday session but I know I'm very, very conscious. If, if I see anything start turning back and they start getting you know, rejected at the 10, 20, whatever moving average and start reversing back down, I'm not naive. I know the big picture where we are. And I think that area of the market uh, could start rolling over, whether it's tomorrow, excuse me, whether it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, eventually these stocks hit supply. And if they can't confirm the bigger channels, that's when we're gonna start turning around uh, and revisiting back to uh, lower levels the same way uh, it happened on the January 24th lows. We decided to go back down. And now the question is, do, you know, is this 318 eventually going to be the next quote unquote uh, generational bottom? Or is this something that we're going to uh, revisit uh, very, very uh, short term all right, to be determined? So guys, have a great, great weekend. Uh, I hope everybody stays safe. Again, say a prayer, please, for the innocent victims. Uh, and casualties and the families and all that good stuff uh, for people who are sitting at home right now in the Ukraine, hoping to God just to see uh, another day. Guys, God bless. Stay safe. All the best. And I'll see you on the field on Monday. Take